<clears throat> Welcome to my channel. Okay, right, next video. What should we do next? Uh, let's do this Numatron one. So, this was actually the... Ooh, I haven't done them in, in, in the correct order. This was... I, this was the first Numatron clock I ever made. And th I think this was the second clock I ever made. Um, the first one being um, this one, which I reviewed in a previous video. This one, I know for a fact, doesn't work. And, and people will be absolutely wetting themselves uh, that, that, that know about electronics with these two P's and stuff soldered to it. So this one was my first attempt um, at soldering together a Numatron uh, clock. Now, this one, talk you through it quickly. Obviously, anyone that buys PCPs will know these ones just come off eBay and they're cheap. You get them in big packs and that's one sawn in half to make the base that stands like that. At the front, it's got some LEDs that indicate the hours. So if it's 18.30, so six, half past six, it'll go, when it flashes, it'll flash on there, one, eight, three, zero. And it'll go one, eight, three, zero. So you know where you're up to. All the resistors, transistors, blah, 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 blah. And then on the back, a little power converter. Reason being, this one runs off um, off uh, just a USB. So uh, where's one running off a USB of that type? There's one there. Uh, is it plugged in? Yeah, so we plug it in. I know it doesn't work. I think it'll light up, but I don't think that. Yeah, there you go. Right, so you can see it's flashing, but the problem is that one of the filaments has gone. Again, another clock that got broken in the house move. One, two, zero, zero. Um, you can see down this one side, it's very dull, um, and that's because one of the filaments has gone um, inside there, and it's just affecting the actual. Um, the, the clock front it's the grid there's a wire that goes to this grid here so there's only like one side of it that's, that's electri electrified i don't know again if i'm wrong on this this is just my opinion if i'm wrong then please correct me so with this one i fold all the guides and everything how to make it wait till you see the bottom look at that for a rat's nest that's a right mess that is um and then i've hot snotted it all together as well so it didn't move around you probably won't be able to see that because how bright that led is um so yeah it's got a little led in there that lights it up and it looks lovely at night hey there you go look there you are see the filament there it's gone bright red um it's because he's moved across there you go so now that one filament's going again they are look back to normal again so that's what i'm talking about with that filament you'll actually i don't know if you'll be able to see there's a tiny filament going up there and it's actually glowing red because it should only be taking half the voltage um that it is now it's taking double the voltage because obviously there's another filament that should be going in front this side there you go. You see it then? There you go. Anyway, um, so this one, where's the button for it? It'll be around here. There it is. So that's how you change the time. So let's set it to half six. One, change that to an eight. Eighteen. One, eight. Three. One, eight. Three, zero. <laughs> oh no, one. One, because yeah, it's been a minute since I've started clock up now um i don't know what i was playing at but um i couldn't find the right resistor to go between um between 12 volts and the um grid i needed to put a resistor in line with it now the resistor it said in the uh, schematic that i found online it didn't work properly so i in my complete ignorance i just basically went through my parts box just trying every resistor until i found one that worked because um i you wouldn't believe that i have actually got an a level in electronics uh, electronic design um although it is um it, it is like the the lowest of d's that i managed to get um i completely didn't pay any attention in a level electronics um i regret it now but yeah um i i, I can't remember ohm's law or anything else to work out those things so i thought oh i'll trial and error go through it. how many can there be managed to find the right one um, but it got really hot so i used two instead in line which even made made it even brighter made the filament light up even brighter the the, the front um and it worked great but i noticed um after a day of running it, a smell of like um, ozone in the room hot electronics um, and the resistors were getting really hot so what i did to, to solve that was i um put some more wound it round in a spring effect so you can see it springing and then soldered it to this penny which worked a treat it works fine you know if it broke don't, don't if it ain't broke don't fix it's the saying in it and i tell you what that's a bodge and a half that is soldering a penny to it but it works so there we go what would be easier obviously is putting the correct resistor in there or working out what's wrong but it works 
Um, and it was running for about a year, this one, uh, if not longer before I got bored of it and changed it for a different clock. Uh, then on this side, you've got the voltage regulator. Um, again, 5 volts. I haven't got a clue why now I did this. Um, there's a little switch here as well to turn the LEDs off. There you go, look at that, see? So anyway, um, I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I didn't just take the, the input voltage. If I was doing it now, I'd take the input voltage from the USB, put a smoothing capacitor on it, if that's what you call it, but I'll put a capacitor on it because that seems to make it better, and then put it straight to the chip. But for some reason, I put it in, sent, then I've got this voltage converter on the back that sends up to 12 volts, and then I'm regulating it down with this to 3 volts again, uh, to 5 volts. Makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. Um, what I'd do now, I, I missed out, I omitted a, I omitted a bit there, actually. Uh, what I'd do now if I was building it was take the voltage in, and then I'd... Um... No, I did it, yeah, I, I said about the capacitor. So, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, anyway, there you go. There's the next one that I've reviewed. Um, another interesting one. Um, and, again, yeah, they're great things to have on and around the house. Um, what I, I, I lived in an apartment for a long time, and that's why I got into so many electronics, and that's why it's panned off lately and gone on to more gardening and DIY things and, and stuff like that. When I lived in the apartment, it was in the centre of the city I live in. A really nice apartment. It was actually, I was the first person to move in there that wasn't over 80. Um, or was it over 60? It was over 60. It was one of those retirement homes. Um, and then a bigger one opened across the road. And um, so we were the first people to move in when they took the restriction off age. And um, it was a brilliant place. It had like a library in it with some really good books. I'd say 50% of them were Mills and Boone. And the rest of them were like really good sci-fi books. Someone must have passed away there who, who, who liked sci-fi and they put his book collection in the library. Um, so there was a library there, had a laundrette in there. It was all free to use. Um, there, there was like a, a person that, that stayed there as well, like a, a, a caretaker. So you never, ever had to, like, you never missed a parcel. So if you had a delivery, if you weren't in, she'd sign for it. It was absolutely great. Um, had a really big balcony that I grew loads of stuff on. But anyway, I didn't have an outside really area. I had a nice big balcony, but that was about it. Um, so I'm a very hands-on person, so I did a lot of electronics uh, with my, in my spare time. And one thing I did do, uh, which is a point I was going to make before I waned off on describing my apartment, um, was um, I started to get into solar panels and stuff, and I bought a few small solar panels, had them on the balcony, charging up a battery, and I just had loads of these clocks all lined up um, in front of the TV. It drove my wife mad because she could never concentrate on the TV. But then again, I can never concentrate because she's always bloody wittering on about all sorts of crap. So, yeah, um, didn't bother me, but I liked them there. So they all just ran off 12 volts um, off the, um, oh, what's it called? The solar panel. So I had it charging up some small sealed lead acid batteries um, that were kept outside. And then it ran in the house on 12 volts. Um, and I had some cigarette lighter output and um, some USB ports and all sorts. It was really good. The only one I actually ran off mains was this one, although it runs off all, uh, although it runs off the USB, it was running off mains, uh, uh, an iPhone adapter, because um, that's the one I actually used for the real clock. I used to have a sign next to all these clocks you know, underneath the TV that says, do not trust these clocks, because, uh, <laughs> yeah, if they got a bit tetchy sometimes and stuff. But to be honest with you, it's only because of my poor soldering. Like this one here that I did towards the end, this will keep really good time. I haven't even noticed them losing, um, you know, a minute even um, over the space of probably, they're probably on for a, a big run of, I don't know, um, maybe three, four months before the power gets turned off to them and stuff. And I never noticed any time keeping her shoes. But yeah, there we go. So there's another one of my clocks uh, reviewed. Uh, make sure you watch the other videos because there's all sorts, including the... Uh, Numatron and Nixie watches and things like that um, and yeah so thanks for watching um, make sure you rate the video if you like it like it if you don't don't um, and put a comment in the box below if you feel so and yeah subscribe so thanks for watching cheers bye